Max Holloway will be fighting the Korean Zombie in a matter of hours. Before it goes down, Josh and John pick the winner for this highly anticipated main event. I love Chan Sung Jung. He's a dynamite fighter, but he is he's reached his peak and he's over his peak. And uh, he's slowed down as a fighter. He's still a great grappler, but his stand-up has slowed down. He doesn't He doesn't create the same angles that he used to create with his footwork or he's not catching guys in the same thing and that's in my opinion based on just speed he's going up against one of the best damn stand-up fighters there is in the game max holloway is just a freaking animal when it comes to the stand-up i think this fight for the most part is going to end up in the stand-up position throughout it the real question is you know with everything happening in hawaii is that taking any attention away from max how's he doing you know where where is his mind at he's a professional so you know I have no doubts in him, but I look at this fight and at one time, this was an incredible fight where 50-50, I would say. It's not 50-50 now. Max Holloway is is by far the guy that should be the, the favorite in this. Korean Zombie is going to be a big underdog in this fight. It's going to be tough for him to get a win. Yeah, I'm looking at this fight. I'm thinking to myself, with Korean Zombie, he just can't take the damage he used to take. He doesn't take it as well as he used no, to take it. Uh, he's been true. in too many battles, been in too many wars, knocked down drag outs. And uh, his fight with Volk, man, he just, he just got punched punished the whole fight was punishment yeah. and uh i'm gonna be honest this fight's gonna be the exact same way he's gonna just take nothing but punishment max I, I agree with you in terms of we don't know where his mindset is but he's a motivated son of a bitch when it comes to things like this yeah it comes to fight night he's always it's not there. just fight night i believe that i believe that the hawaiians man they're proud people hawaiians are fighters yeah. And they're warriors and all the stuff that's going on over there right now. And you know, and all the stuff that the hawaiians are posting about the government the all no, they're, they're not, not happy at all and i believe oh, wow. i believe that he is someone that is he's going to make it very vocal um and he wants to make sure he gets that microphone in front of him to say what he wants to say at the end i don't know if it's going to be positive or negative but i would imagine it's going to be something along the lines of my people are hurting right now and we need all the help we can get so please support us that's a, that's what i see coming out of max holloway's mouth he is a true, genuine person when it comes to him as a father, him as a husband, him as, as a Hawaiian. And uh, if you guys can't support him, I can't I can't help you in this sport, man. This guy is a fucking amazing person. <laughs> I just think stylistically, he's a really bad matchup for a Korean Zombie. The speed, his accuracy. Especially at this point in His movement. And Zombie just doesn't take the punishment like he used to. But three or four years away, I think it was three years away, uh, Zombie had to join the military. It ruined his career. I wouldn't say ruined it. He came back strong. Uh, came back strong. Yeah. But he, yes. he didn't get better. I wouldn't say it ruined his career, but yeah, it was a time away that he wasn't getting better. He wasn't better. progressing. Yeah. yeah. And the game just evolves. Yeah. And Max was deep into his weight cut when doing media for the fight and struggled to hold back his tears when asked about Hawaii. And you guys saw how everything went down, how how the Lahaina people was let down by the state, by the government. But, you know, the the, the Hawaii community, they stepped up. The people stepped up. The Hawaiians stepped up. And then, you know, after the Hawaiians stepped up, the world has stepped up. You guys are seeing and everything and people helping, you know. The, the UFC is helping out with with this. Uh, with, uh, UFC loves Hawaii and, and so on and so on. And it's just, it's a tough thing, man. You know, I just... Uh, I just shared my story about uh, how some people ended up uh, passing away and, and they got the name. So it's just tough, man. Those guys, is, uh, they're the real heroes right now. They're going through it. And, uh, and um, my walkout song is going to be a dedication to them. And, uh, and they said... Uh, that we should use uh we should use bread to like uh you know solidify those guys that's in the fire and going through it so I actually gonna be using red for the first time in my uh in my UC career. You know, I've been using the black the universal and I was able to be granted red for this short, so yeah, a lot of things, you know. I, I, I always go in there with uh with Hawaii on my back, but uh feels a little bit heavy right now. Anthony Smith also did some media where he says he's not scared of Pereira since his size isn't a factor at light heavyweight. I thought that Alex looked pretty good. Uh, and to be fair, I thought Jan looked pretty good as well. He, he was able to, to, to do a lot of things that Jan Blachowicz typically does to be successful. I think that Alex had a, a little bit of an eye-opening moment though at 205. He's 
not the large, scary monster that he was at middleweight. He's a fairly normal dude. Um, now, because he's so so technical and, and, and has such an incredible striking game, he's always going to be special. But in terms of just his size and power, he doesn't stand out uh, amongst all of the 205ers. I mean, I don't think that Alex Pereira is more powerful and explosive than an Alexander Rakic. Um, he, he's not going to be stronger than a guy like Ankalaev or, you know what I mean? Like th these dudes are big, powerful, hard hitting dudes, every single one of them. It, because he's such a good striker, he's going to still, he's still going to be special, but it's not going to be just his power and, and his strength that's going to that push him over the top anymore. But I, I thought he looked good. I, I thought that his conditioning looked really good, especially at altitude in Utah. Um, I think we've seen Jan Blahovic had a really tough time with that after the first round of grappling heavy. He looked really gassed after the first. Um, his takedown defense was improved. He looked good even when he was taken down. He had his back taken. He he fought well from the bottom, which makes a lot of sense because he does spend a lot of time with Glover, and, and you're not going to find a much better MMA grappler than that. So uh, it looked to me like he was improving. Um, Jan looked like the same Jan that we've seen time and time again. But, you know, at 38 or 39 years old, it, I don't know how much more improving Jan has to do. Uh, but with that said, I thought Jan looked really good as well. With the McGregor Chandler fight up in the air with no real date, Darren Till doubts if McGregor will ever fight again. Here's what he said. Connor's never coming back in my opinion. Connor's struggling to let go. He doesn't want to let it go, but it's time to let go. He's older. He doesn't train like he used to. He's got the money and his beautiful kids. And the only problem is that he just does not want to let it go. There's going to come a day where he realizes he's fighting with himself and he has to let go. Every recording on Twitter, he's just drunk as F and I'm just crying my eyes out laughing at him. It will take him a while, but he'll find his peace. My opinion of Connor is you have to respect what he's done, but it's time to let go. He's struggling to let go. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's going to come back and prove us all wrong. He might just not be ready in terms of testing, or he just wants to keep his name out there, and he's thinking in terms of next year. It's tough to know. He's a smarter businessman than most, so you just have to trust what he's doing. Till then speaks on his own return, saying this. I need to fight now. I'm so ready to fight. I've put a lot of time and effort and hard work in. As you can see, my shape has changed considerably this year. I really dedicated myself this year. I really have. I just can't wait to fight now. Mike Perry, Logan Paul, Dylan Danis, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, any F in one, any F in time, I'm ready. As always, they can say you got beat in your last fight or whatever, but I've always shown up and I've always fought, injuries or not. I'm just so ready for it, I'm feeling powerful and big, so I probably need to trim up a little bit, but I'm good and I'm confident. I just want to get some sparring done and then get in there and just savagely beat someone or savagely get beaten myself. So what? Mike Tyson is helping Francis Ngannou in his preparation for Tyson Fury, and Mike is very impressed with more than just Ngannou's power, and he says if he lands, he'll knock him out. Tyson Fury got dropped by a small guy early in his career. Francis punches like God knows who, man. He's an athlete. He moves quicker, works with his speed, and listen, man, he only has to land one or two. Tyson's never been in the ring with somebody that can punch this hard. He asked me to go all out aggression. He's moving his head. He's getting it together. He's determined to do this stuff for his country, his people, his patriotic pride. This is really interesting. I'm very excited about doing this. Would be a bigger upset than Douglas Tyson. And Michael Chandler begins his training camp for a McGregor fight that might never happen. <laughs> And with O'Malley knocking out Sterling at UFC 292 in spectacular fashion, fans around the world got to witness the spectacle, but Volkanovski wasn't one of them. My little microphone. That's in my car. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I missed it. Was... Oh, what was that? I looked away for like a second and just missed it. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and see you in the next one. Sky